This video is brought to you by my brand new course, Getting Started with Foundation Model Framework. I just released this course and this course is still being developed, but there are some sections that are available that will give you an idea of power of the Foundations Framework for Apple. And there is a early bird deal going on. You can use the coupon code early bird to save 40% and the coupon will expire on June 20th. So don't wait too long. As I mentioned that this course is currently being developed. It's a work in progress, but you can already access a couple of different sections where I will talk about how you can get started with the new foundation model framework. I will talk about streaming responses, guided generation, even tools, and integrating with Surf UI. And there are a lot of other sections that are planned and that will be added later. This will be my primary focus for a couple of months at least or the whole summer. So I'll be adding a lot more over here. So it will be really exciting. And I'm super excited about this model framework. It's just so much fun to work with. So if you are interested, check out getting started with foundation model framework and also Make sure that you take advantage of this deal. Thank you so much. Now let's go back to the video. So at WWDC 2025, Apple released the foundation models framework, which are basically LLMs, large language models that run on device. Now this is really cool because you can kind of think about kind of like the chat GPT, but working on device. Now keep in mind that the models that are provided by Apple are not as large as ChatGPT, but they are actually very good also. They are uh, optimized for mobile devices. All right. Now, if you want to get started with using foundation models, there are a couple of prerequisites. The first thing you need is you need to be running on the latest operating system, Mac OS Tahoe. All right. So I've already installed Tahoe on my machine and I'm using that. The other thing is the M1 or Apple Silicon. So if you try to run it on an Intel based processor where Apple intelligence is not really, you know, enabled or not really available, then it's not going to work. So you will need a silicon enabled machine. I am using my 13 inch MacBook Pro M1, which is silicon. So we got the Mac OS Tahoe, we got the silicon, then you obviously need Xcode 26. So you can go ahead and download Xcode 26. All right. So hopefully when you have all of those different things, now that is a quite a requirement, then you can get started. So I'm going to go ahead and start Xcode 26, Xcode beta over here. Let's go ahead and start it. And I'm just going to create a new project. All right. And in the new project, whatever name you want to give, I'm going to say Hello Foundations. That's a nice name. There we go. Let's just put it on the desktop for now. Now, keep in mind that everything over here, uh, you know, those these things can change because it's still being developed. So not a big deal. I guess we can uh, record some new videos in the future. But there it is. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and yeah, there we go. Remove that pane on the left so that we have a little bit more area to work with. Uh, the good thing is that you can actually test out the foundation models right in your simulator, right in your Xcode previews. So that is perfectly fine. You can see that it's trying to boot up the iPhone simulator and Usually it takes a little bit of time, but uh, let, let's actually let's build the app again. The app doesn't really have anything, by the way. So the build is rather quickly, but we'll be able to see hopefully this uh, Xcode previews in a moment. Okay, so now we can see the previews. Now there are many different ways of getting started, but since this is kind of like the first video, I'm going to show you that you can actually get started with using playgrounds right inside your 
app file or a sysui view file. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and import playgrounds. And we will be using foundation models. So let's go ahead and import foundation models also. Great. Now the way that we can use playgrounds right inside is by using a macro. So we can go ahead and say playground. You can see that this kind of comes up. And I don't think we need to provide all of this stuff. So we'll just say it like this, create enclosure. And what will happen is if I see on the right hand side in Xcode previews, it is going to create another tab. And this tab has this, you know, the lab beaker or whatever you want to call it. So that is representing that this is for the playgrounds. And you can do anything in the playgrounds that you that you were comfortable doing. Like I can go ahead and create a variable like let a is equals to 10 and I can actually see the result right there. So that's actually pretty cool, right? Okay. And the reason that I'm showing you the playgrounds is that it's a great way to get started with the foundation models. And you'll be able to see that how simple it is to kind of like just get started. So the first thing we need to do is we will go ahead and create a session. Session equals to, and this will be a language model session. So we'll create a language model session. Okay, nice and simple. Next, we can go ahead and say session dot respond and respond to a prompt. Now prompt over here can be string uh, and, you know, prompt can you can also do streaming prompts like it's going to return as it uh, gets the whole output but right now i'm just going to say list all states in usa nice and simple like this is our prompt this is what we're asking the model to do is to list all 50 states uh, in in usa and this is going to return us a response now if you look at the definition of the respond over here, the respond function, option click. You can see that it's an async function right there, and it can also throws. So async function, that means that we need to use await, and throws means that we have to use try. And it's a good idea to catch it also, right? So do that. And that's pretty much it. I mean, now I can go ahead and say response.content, and I'm just going to get the result of my prompt, which is list all 50 states in US. And we're just going to wait a little bit because it does take a little bit of time to, you know, evaluate and then perform action. But look at that right there at the bottom, right there. We, we got all 50 states. Is that cool that by using only a couple of lines of code, we were able to do that. Now, you can also go ahead and change the prompt. I mean, if this is not what you want to ask, then you can go ahead and ask anything that you want, like who was the, I don't know, first president. Okay, first president of the United States. Sure. Let's go ahead and the first president of the United States was George Washington. All right, so we're able to prompt, we're able to get the data back. We can even say over here uh, something like write a short story and let's see about a cat. Okay, sure, about a cat. And again, one thing to notice over here is when I perform a prompt, it comes back with the entire result. Right, And it, that is why it's taking a little bit more time to come back. You can see that it's been like, what, 10, 15 seconds now. And it's still trying to figure out that how to reply to a prompt, like write a short story about a cat. And, you know, you can change the prompt to say like, okay, make sure it's like five lines or so. Uh, you can definitely see that it's not really returning anything right now. So let's see if it actually works out. All right. But sometimes, you know, these things can take time to return. I mean, a short story over here doesn't really mean one line or one sentence. That can be number of paragraphs. So if you want, you can also tell the prompt that, hey, 
I'm also only looking for like three lines of stories. But you can see that it's taking a while. So let's just wait and see that when it actually returns back. All right, so it did took a while, at least I would say 20, 25 seconds, but we got some story back. And it's a pretty long story, as you can see, right? There we go. Okay, so this will definitely not provide the user with a good experience because now they have to wait like 30 seconds or so, so that the story is being developed. So how can we change that? How can we make it better? Well, one of the ways that you can actually make it better is by streaming the output. Streaming the output means that it will return you the output as it is being generated or partially generated. All right. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. And you'll see that it's quite simple. Stream equals two. And again, we're going to use the session. So session dot stream response. So you'll see that one of those functions over here are stream response. And we can use the same exact prompt. So let me just copy this prompt. And let's comment out these parts because we're not going to use that. It's taking like 30 seconds to come back. We're not going to use that. So this is going to give us a stream response. And what we can do is we can go through this, we can say this is a partial response in stream. And since we're using try await, this means that this is going to be an async stream. So whenever it returns something, we're just going to get access to that. And then I can go ahead and uh, print out the partial response. Okay. And now let's go ahead and try it out. Okay. So let's see if it runs now. I think we're still waiting for that. There we go. See that? Now it's not 30 seconds, but it was like more like five seconds or so. And you can see that as the response is being built up, it is being returned. See that? It is being returned. Now this is a much better approach than waiting for a very long time. So you need to stream the response, put it on the UI so the user can see that there's something going on and they can even start reading the story. Uh, and by the time, you know, it's finished, the response is finished, maybe the user is also finished reading. All right. So this was a very basic introduction to the foundation models framework uh, that was released in WWDC 2025. And I really hope that you enjoy this framework. And hey, you know what? Make sure that you check out the course that I mentioned. All right. Let me actually see if I have access to this over here. Okay. There we go. Uh, just go to adamsharp.school and go to courses. This is a course right there. And I will be adding a lot more content. This will be my primary focus for the whole summer. So I'll be adding a lot more content for the foundation model framework. All right. And you can always use the early bird to save 40% off, but that will expire June 20th. All right. That's, that's it. Thank you so much. And I hope you have enjoyed this video. And uh, I hope that you're also as excited that I am about the foundations model framework because there's so many possibilities and I have so many fun projects to share with you. Thank you so much. Please give it a thumbs up, like, share. Thank you.